Okay, folks, here I am. And I have, oh, I know you're just as excited because this is Palm Sunday and you get to wave the branches. We're not going to make you march through the streets, but uh, it is so nice that all of you are here today for Palm Sunday. First of all, I want to welcome you to our church and our services. Um, we have some visitors, I noticed, in the uh, congregation today. So if you would please raise your hand. We have some a token to give to you from the church. And tis very tasty. <laughs> okay, while those are being passed, I will uh, give you a few announcements. First of all, yesterday our youth were at Silver Dollar City for the Young Christians Weekend, and I hear they had a good time. Pictures were taken, and uh, you, you can go and check them out on Facebook, since a lot of you did invest in this activity. You remember the Super Bowl and all that good soup, and my the, the raffle ticket winners, I think, that were in, in on all, all of that, too. Uh, it, was, it was a nice blessing, and I know it was a little bit windy yesterday for you. And I'm seeing some bright red faces today, I'm sure more from the wind than the sun. So it was great to have all of you going. Uh, further announcements, this coming week, Maundy Thursday, will be Thursday night at 6 p.m. Uh, we will be observing communion at that time, and all are welcome to come for that. On Friday, we have our prayer vigil. And... Uh, I still need some people to sign up for the prayer vigil, so Roger here is going to start passing around the clipboard. And if you can, please put out to the side of your name whether you're going to pray at home or if you're going to be here at the church. And for some of you, we do have this uh, guidelines for a pattern of Christian prayer if you need some helps uh, out on the table in the narthex. On Friday, Saturday... We have, I believe, an Easter egg hunt here at the church, plus lunch and a movie. At following that, we can tell this is a busy week, and, and that's for anyone who'd like to participate. And I know they had a wish list for th items, and you, if you still have a mind to bring something for that, uh, there will be a basket downstairs that you can drop it off during the week. On Sunday morning, then... We will have, we won't have a fellowship dinner. We're going to have pancake breakfast and we're, we're looking for servers. It, uh, I'm not servers for people to help with the meal. Our servers will be our youth who raising money for the next activity that they are going to participate will appreciate any and all tips as they are being served. Also that morning, uh, the youth brought, uh, were the ones that brought this up. They think we need to reinstate the Easter bonnet tradition that we've had in the past. So if you've got a favorite little head covering that, that you would like to share and, and come and participate, please do so. Before the service between 10 a.m. and 10.30 and right after church at 12.30, over in the uh, seekers room, which is this room here to the north of the sanctuary, family photos will be taken since you're all in your finery, come in and get your family together and get some pictures. I believe, Stacy, you're in charge of that? Yes, yes. So anyway, lots going on, plus the actual Easter services that we have next Sunday. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Okay, then at this time, we'll have our acolyte come forward.
we enter this service, we are reminded of the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. We too will wave our branches here shortly and we would put down our cloaks as well if Jesus were walking through the door. We would, we would sing hallelujah and hosanna in the highest with our best voices. And as one voice, we would shout and sing that this is the Christ, the Lord, who has come to save his people. Today is a special day, so let us rejoice in it. And let us do that by standing and waving our palm branches, singing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. As we have been stating our Lenten devotional, it is difficult for us to believe that salvation came from the remnant of Israel. It's difficult for us to believe that our God came in the unspectacular form of a servant who entered Jerusalem on a donkey and who was killed as a common criminal. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you Holy, holy, holy is this place when in the presence of Christ. As we have prepared for your coming, we ask you to bless this space and come into our hearts. We sing and celebrate that you are willing to come in love and in awe, Christ. Be a part of this service here and now. Amen. And now we will continue with our praise songs.
Let us pray. Lord, we know that you hear us. We know that you see us wave and our branches and like the crowd shout with such joy. Yet you know that within us, our inner beings, our shouts may not be so sincere. Lord, we, need, we know that we need a Savior, and we, we have heard you. Help us to feel your strength that lends us through anything and improves us to serve. Lord, I ask this morning that you bless this choir as they bring us the message this morning. Thank you for them sharing their gift of music with us and also with Rod as he has directed them. Be with those who are suffering, Lord, from the storms this past week, from illnesses, grief, depression, and lack of faith. Please be with each one in the times of sorrow as well as the times of joy. And now let us pray the prayer which Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Everything about Jesus is unexpected. He came as a baby and yet was a king. He came to the simplest people. He loved the outcasts, the lepers, and the sinners. He saw the best in people, even the ones who shouted with joy at his arrival in Jerusalem, but later that same week denied him, betrayed him, and belittled him. He came to save us. In our limited human minds, this doesn't make sense. But thanks to him, he comes on his terms and not ours. So when we come to this meal, we come to be reminded that there is a Savior who gives his life so that we can live. The Savior believes in us and will do whatever it takes to connect with us and give us new life. Come and partake of this amazing meal of love. And now we will sing our communion hymn. Tis midnight on Olive's brow. <coughs>
Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And likewise, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now the prayers of the elders. Dear Lord, we are taking this time to remember your great sacrifice of our sins. We shall not forget your broken body, not for anything you did wrong, but because you were paying the penalty for our sins. As we break the bread together, we do not take this moment lightly, but recognize how precious and holy this is. Thank you for loving us enough to pay this great price for our redemption. And now the prayer continues. Dear God, today we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ to remember the extraordinary sacrifice you made in sending Jesus, your beloved son, to be with us. We thank you for his legacy in words, and actions, and obedience to suffering on the cross. Lord, we come to you now to ask for forgiveness for any thoughts or words or deeds that have not honored your name. We are also truly sorry for the times that we have chosen to live selfishly rather than heed your calling. We invite you to inhabit our hearts now as we share this wine. Bind us together as one family filled with your love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that is at work in all of our lives. Amen. Mm -hmm.
The crowd was excited to see Jesus come into town, so they gifted him with the branches, the cloaks, and the shouts of joy. Their gifts, really, to Jesus were things that one could possess and throw away. But the gift that Jesus brought was something that cannot possess just to throw away. We can deny it, but our denial doesn't keep it from coming. His gift to us was forgiveness and new life, and it is a gift that changes us. When we give our gifts to the church, we are giving something that in God's hands becomes so much more than we can ever imagine. It brings renewal and transforms the giver and the receiver. All we need to do is believe and trust the promises of God. Let us give. Now the deacons may bring the offering plates forward. Thank you, God, for allowing us to partner with you as we offer back to you that which you have given to us. Let it touch the lives of many who need to hear that they are loved, cherished, and valued. May we continue to celebrate your coming as we continue to give our gifts. In your name we pray, amen. One of my favorite times of the year is when the children come up and wave the palms. Today, unfortunately, we discovered that a year ago, a lot of the kids, or some of the kids in one family, uh, actually were allergic to the palm branches. So we were a little short on palm wavers today. But, uh, we're not short on our choir members, and we're uh, happy to be able to present the Easter story to you today. Uh, the, if you want to follow along, and the song list is on the back <coughs> of the bulletin. Um, our narrators today are Maxine Church and Russ Wydeen. Our soloists are Paula Williamson and Stacy Eastridge.
Esther is the story of a king. But this king did not look or act like any other king. Most kings dress in royal robes, rich and luxurious, intentionally different from the daily dress of their people. This king took off his heavenly robes and dressed himself in our flesh and blood. He put on the simple garments of the poor so that he could feel exactly how they feel. He had no palace, no throne, no wealth or power. But when the humble saw how great and kind he was, they loved him and joyfully praised him and asked him to be their king. is a story of sacrifice. We cannot imagine all that King Jesus did for us. We have never seen the beauty he gave up, the warmth of the light, the perfect joy, the unbroken peace, the all-engulfing love. And we will never experience what he suffered. Stop for a moment and simply look at him. See his body bloodied and broken. Look into his face disfigured by pain and cruel abuse. What do you wish to say to your king?
is a story of darkness. The king of glory is now the man of sorrows. The son of righteousness is shrouded in blackness. Our tiny human candle of justice, kindness, and enlightenment has been snuffed out by the raging storm of our bitterness and anger. There he hangs, our self-giving creator, engulfed at noonday in the midnight of our sin. His searing pain, physical, emotional, and spiritual, is the awful fruit of our own selfishness. The death that grips him now is the punishment of our sins. is a story of love. See him there, the transcendent God in all his magnificence, all the passions of his love, all the perfection of his wisdom, all the power of his sovereignty to join us together and to accomplish this one thing, our eternal oneness with him. Look at his life. Look at his death. Listen to the gasp of his dying words. He loves us. With all he is, this suffering Savior loves us.
Easter is a story of life. Without our Creator's life springing up within us, our existence <coughs> is only physical, brief, and shallow. When our bodies die, so does all our hope. But in love, the King of life died our death. Now the boundless, beautiful, irrepressible life of God is our life. We are alive in him, deeply, fully, now and forever. to the end of this beautiful service today, you guys in this church, 
never cease to amaze me as to the gifts that you're so willing to give to everyone else. And we thank you for that. Now as we sing our hymn of invitation, I would like to remind you that if there are any of you who would like to come forward for uh, joining this church or for prayer, our elders will come and uh, be by your side. And we will do this while we sing a good old timer, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Please sing. for the one who came to save us. May we, as we leave this place, share the good news with those that we meet. In thy precious name, amen.